now recommended for parole after 46 years, Leslie Van Houten could possibly go free, sparking major reaction from family members of the victims, including Hollywood star Sharon Tate's sister, Deborah. Our exclusive interview with her is in just a moment, but first, ABC's David Wright has the latest. Who cares if love is love? She was called the next Marilyn Monroe. Sharon Tate is Jennifer. Sharon Tate, a rising Hollywood star in the 1960s, her potential unlimited. I, I can't see myself doing Shakespeare or anything like that. I would love like comedy. Sharon Tate's life off screen was just as glamorous. Married to Oscar winning director Roman Polanski, she was eight and a half months pregnant with their son in the late summer of 1969. But on August 9th, the unthinkable happened. Inside this house, the 26-year-old actress and four others were brutally murdered by four followers of Charles Manson. One of the killers, Patricia Krenwinkel, now serving life in prison, spoke with Diane Sawyer in 1994. Charlie came up and asked everybody how it went. But that was the first time I looked at him and I said, Charlie, they were so young. The very next day, wealthy grocer Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary also murdered by members of the so-called Manson family. Leslie Van Houten, seen here smiling with that X carved in her forehead. She was the youngest woman ever to be condemned to death in California. The sentence later commuted to life in prison. On Thursday, 46 years after the murders, a California parole board finally approved her release after denying parole 19 times. I can never say we'll never be willing to accept the fact that these people cannot influence the actions of others. Sharon Tate's sister Deborah, the last in the family line that has consistently worked to keep Manson's followers in prison, calls Van Houten's pending release an injustice. All right, David, thank you very much. We're joined now exclusively by Sharon Tate's sister, Deborah, who, as you just saw, has spent much of her life campaigning against the release of Charles Manson or any of his followers. Deborah, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having this me. This morning, you were there in the room. What went through your mind when you heard that Van Houten was recommended for parole? Your heart sinks between your knees. It's absolutely mind-boggling what, what goes through your mind. Uh, all of the atrocities from the past, the brutalities, all come flooding back. Deborah, you've been very vocal and you're reaching out to people across the country and you set up a website. Can you tell us about that? Yes, it's Manson, no parole for mansonfamily.com. And what does that entail? This entails a nationwide petition to uh, get signatures to go to Governor Brown. He's the next safety step. These people are domestic terrorists, and once they're released, they can go anywhere in the United States. Parole isn't even the catch net. We have to stop this before it happens. You, you speak about Governor Brown, and he, in January, rejected the parole recommendation of Bruce Davis, a Manson family uh, associate. Does that give you hope that he possibly will do it in this case with Van Houten? I'm hoping. That's our only solace, is that he will stop this parole in the case of Van Houten. And you're aware that part of her sentence that Van Houten was eligible for parole, and she is described as a model prisoner. She has received her bachelor and master's degrees. She's helped with, uh, with groups within the prison system. What do you say to those people who believe that perhaps she does deserve at this point to go free. I do believe in rehabilitation program. It's good that she got those, but this woman is a monster. I sit as far away from her as you and I are now. Mm -hmm. You can feel the vibe. Uh, they are still sociopathic individuals and capable of great brutality. And we always tell people that they need to remember the victims' families. And you say you think of your sister every single Day. Tell us a little Every bit more about. Every single day. Tell us a little bit more about her. Sharon was physically a perfect specimen, but her heart and her soul were equally as beautiful. Had she lived, and the rest of the people that died in her home that night, they were all productive, young, happening people that would have been philanthropic. They would have been of great service to humanity. They would have been a plus to society and. Uh, this monstrous group took 
the future of all of these individuals. Well, Deborah, thank you very much, and we wish you all the best going forward. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah.